What's up, kids? Welcome to Captain Planet's Neighborhood. For those of you guys that don't know me, I'm Captain Planet, marine scientist. So, it's my job to help save the ocean. Today, I want to tell you guys about a certain homie of mine, the parrotfish, okay? I realize that a lot of you kids are, are at home right now and you're not at school. Some of you guys might be a little bit bummed out about that. And I want to let you guys know I'm going to start helping out a little bit more so you guys will have something to learn about. So, leaving the comments on this video, um, a particular kind of homie, um, a creature that lives in the ocean. Or it can be an idea like a, a specific ecosystem in the ocean, like coral reefs, or the deep ocean, or maybe it's a part of an ecosystem like a cleaning station at a coral reef and I could teach you guys um, what these cleaning stations are and how basically it's like how our fish homies take a bath even though they live in water right so today the parrot fish we all love our white sandy beaches but if we don't learn to love the parrot fish all we'll have is a beach of stones right and nobody wants that we love our sand and we need to start paying a little bit more respect to our parrotfish homies because believe it or not kids the more parrotfish you have at a coral reef um, means the faster that reef can actually grow so first let's talk about what a reef actually is you know coral reefs are made up of an animal called a coral that'll be a whole different video but the point of it is, is these corals need to keep growing. And they have something that's kind of a bit of competition. It's called algae. So, it's the parrotfish's job to go around that reef. He spends 90% of his day eating at that algae and, and dead coral and diseased coral. You know, he doesn't want to bite on, on the new healthy coral because it's harder on his beak, his little teeth. See, these guys actually have these teeth that look like a beak. And these brilliant colors, they almost look kind of like a parrot. That's why they're called the parrotfish. But they spend 90% of their day cleaning our reefs, right? And each parrotfish can actually poop out about 700 pounds of white sand every single year. That's a lot of sand, yo. Now, there's different ways that sand is made. Not all sand is made from parrotfish poop. But if you're watching this video with glasses, you could safely say that you've got melted parrotfish poop going across your face helping you see. <laughs> because glass is melted sand, right? And maybe that sand came from the parrotfish poop. So, imagine this parrotfish spends his entire day, 90%, you know, of that 24 hours in a day, eating at these diseased corals and these dead corals and the algae that competes with the coral. See, corals, they have to have bare rock to be able to continue to grow. Um, they can't grow over algae. So that parrotfish comes in, eats that algae, cleans up that spot where that coral can actually grow and continue to grow. You know, that's why we call this competitive algae, um, because it directly competes with the coral growth. So, in a lot of places in the Caribbean, my parrotfish homies are getting overfished. And because of that, you're having um, a degrade in reef. You know, you're having a situation to where the reefs are what bring people to the Caribbean for the tourism. You know, but by overfishing these parrotfish, we're actually killing the reef that provides us the money that people come to visit us. You know, and I think that we need to start helping out and educating our islanders about this. You know, a fisherman friend of mine, his name's Bill. Um, he sent me some pictures of some parrotfish for sale, you know, being to be eaten um, right out of Naples, Florida. You know, and... and I kind of have a problem with that, you know, because we're trying so hard to rebuild our corals that why would we ever want to fish the parrotfish? Okay, so when I used to do coral restoration down in the Florida Keys, 
what I did is I would go around and help monitor all the coral plantings. So a couple companies would help plant corals back out on the reef. Um, the corals with the genomes that we thought were going to thrive in the oceans that we're predicting 50 to 70 years from now. You know, warmer, more acidic waters. That can be another video too, guys, for an idea to put as a comment. Now, we go and we plant these corals, right? Well, you could consider the parrotfish like an army of volunteers helping to make sure that that coral thrives because if they're eating the diseased coral and the damaged coral, it means that those corals' genetics just aren't that tough, you know, for the changes that are happening in our ocean. You know, the ocean acidification, um, an idea for another video, guys. Um, but they're, they're not able to thrive, right, for whatever reason in their genome, okay? So we don't want that diseased coral to keep spawning with, with the healthy coral and then the, give the babies that are half healthy and half diseased, right? So in so many different ways, they're helping us humans. You know, coral reefs are home to 25% of the species who call the ocean home. That's a whole quarter of the ocean living in 0.01% of its surface area. That's crazy. That would be like all of my coolness living in my pinky finger. You know, what's happening in my pinky finger that would make it that cool? Well, these corals grow in all different shapes and sizes, right? And that creates habitats for fishes to live in. You know, so you could say that these reefs that, that we're looking at were actually helped evolve by the parrotfish, homie. Huh? You know, and these are just a few reasons why I think that we shouldn't be fishing parrotfish and why I think we need to reach out to our island homies in the Caribbean. You know, because if we understood that the parrotfish is actually one of our biggest aids in coral restoration and coral reefs are what drives tourism, then I think that we would stock enough thought to protect the parrotfish and protect the reef because that's free help, guys. That's like not having to pay an army of volunteers. It's in their DNA to do that job. Leave a comment in the video, guys, um, of whatever you'd like to learn about, and we'll help you kids get a ocean education. Love y'all. See ya.